Chapter 4. Sense of Existence. What exists can be up for interpretation, and is a fundamental topic of ontology, metaphysics, a major branch of the philosophical study of the nature of being, existence, or reality, as well as of the basic categories of differences, relations, and their similarities. The ability to recognize the fundamental or superficial existence of an object, person, place, or thing. Noticing how or when they fit into your environment, and whether or not you appreciate them according to their physical appearance and perception of them. Otherwise, you find a way to improve the quality of their appearance, rid yourself of them, or change your perceptions of them. The person itself exists physically essentially according to nature, which is codependent upon natural necessities. Once a child grows up into adulthood, they become independent of themselves and then dependent upon their spouse. After that, the objects, places, or things are perceived as man-made inventions. The bigger question is are these entitlements, essential to living a happy and productive lifestyle? According to Health and Human Services, essential entitlements people need in their lives continually, such as clothes, food, health supplies, housing, shoes, and transportation. Other entitlements needed but may not be essential include entertainment, recreation, electronic devices, etc. Biological Family Structure Once a child is born unto the father and mother, they love and nurture him or her. They guide them while instilling family values and beliefs. Some self-beliefs may include characteristics such as approachability, calmness, charisma, determination, dignity, generosity, humor, intelligence, popularity, strength, and quick witness. During this time, they take the child to church and they learn right from wrong. After that, they provide educational resources to help them prepare for preschool and they attend half a day. Once the child becomes a youth, they prepare them for elementary school and they attend school all day. During this time, they help them to attend Sunday school to learn core values. All of which can help to form a personal identity or even individuality, to represent the family as intended, which often starts at an early age. Once the youth becomes a teen, the parents then help them plan for the future with college and career goals. And when the teen becomes an adult the parents help them to plan for marriage to be joined together with a spouse. After that, the married couple forms a union of happiness, love, joy, and peace for all around them, including a support group other than their parents. During this time, the couple attends church together to learn how to build the family's foundation. After that, they set goals and plan their eternal foundation, so they can have, guide, and raise their kids in peaceful harmony. Delayed Child Development When children are slower to develop physical, emotional, social, and communication skills, it is called developmental delay. Health professionals use the term developmental delay until they find out what causes the delay. If and when they find the cause, they then use a name that better explains the child's condition. Developmental delays often show up in the way children behave, communicate, learn, move, and think. When two or more of these areas are affected, it is called a global developmental delay. Delayed development occurs when you postpone something related to a child's growth often. Example, you have a toddler and it is time to teach them to go on the potty but you put it off. The toddler acknowledges the time has come and gone several times when he or she felt responsible. He or she then turns two years of age and they ask you, Mommy, when are you going to potty train me? And you say not now, we will work on that next week, next week comes and nothing gets done. Children with developmental delays take longer to develop new skills than other children. The developmental delay might be short-term or the first sign of a long-term problem. Long-term developmental delays are also called developmental disabilities. Examples include autism spectrum disorder, cerebral palsy, intellectual disability, and learning disabilities. Wanting to be responsible for things he or she sees others their age is responsible for doing can cause anxiety. The anxiety will persist until you stop delaying child development in areas they need to feel responsible most. Global developmental delay is an umbrella term used when children are significantly delayed in their cognitive and physical development. GDD can be diagnosed when a child is delayed in one or more milestones, categorized into motor skills, cognitive skills, emotional and social development, as well as speech. Usually, there is a specific condition that causes this delay, chromosomal abnormalities such as fragile X syndrome. But, sometimes it is difficult to identify this underlying condition. Parents who have children who suffer from learning disabilities just know, once you are in a habit of making the wrong choices your child becomes codependent. However, you ought not to set little children up for a lifetime of failure. Personal Experience Personification is a metaphor commonly used to attribute non-human things to human characteristics. It is a figure of speech in which an idea or thing is regarded as a human when given human feelings or traits. When writers assign animals, inanimate objects, or abstract ideas to recognizable human behaviors and emotions, they create life and motion. The personal experience of a human being comes in the moment-to-moment -moment experience and sensory awareness of internal and external events or a sum of experiences forming an empirical unity such as a period of life. When representing, 
you represent your brand and style in everything you do and say, while utilizing individuality. In which, you respect your body according to human rights and responsibilities, exhibiting honorable character to attract the right energy. But to have personal biases is to be human because we all hold our subjective worldviews and are influenced and shaped by our beliefs, education, experiences, family, friends, peers, and values. Being aware of one's biases is vital to both personal well-being and professional success. Is it okay to say, no you don't get to tell me what my experience is as a witness of Jesus Christ? Actually yes. If it is a fair analysis of your true feelings towards the statement. Representing the family structure. Too often when parents have two or more kids, they allow the one child to represent who can stick to the family structure. After that, the other child or children often gets left behind in the shadows of the representative. The Pharisees overlooked Jesus' authority because he was the stepchild of Joseph, to them James his stepbrother was more worthy of being the representative of the family since he had a legitimate birth. Although Jesus ultimately became the family's representative, he went against most of the family's beliefs and created the Christian church we all know of today. If he had not gone against the family's beliefs, the church would have strict laws and rituals to follow, which would take up a lot of time. But generally, you represent another, self, or others when it is your duty. Serve to represent whether acting or standing and learn what is and what isn't expected of you. When representing the family do it according to your family structure, and avoid stepping outside the family beliefs and values. Example of horrible individuality. Writing a book about apples, and then putting a picture of yourself on the front of the book will cause a shock when looking at the title. This shows signs of inferiority and superiority complexes because your picture won't give a clear understanding of apples. Putting an author's picture on a book when it isn't about them, is something a lot of writers do nowadays. When in fact the book won't give a clear understanding of where the fruits are. From what I have noticed, the authors say basic information using a ton of words rather than just getting to the point. This is an error in human judgment that can be corrected for future generations to fully understand practical logic. When you write about an author put a picture of them on there, if you have written about apples simply put a picture of apples on the book. Stability in the home life. The outside of a home's physical condition ought to be structurally stable to remain in it. The home life models the character a person will convey to their audience because the vows of God remain in a person's heart when the home life is stable. Therefore, home life ought to be comfortable, consistently clean, and transformable. The home ought to be built on rational guidance, joy, love, natural affection, nurturing, peace, and respect. To develop and grow into maturity, financial stability, education, logic, and reasoning, and transportation are must-haves. Other must-haves are further education, mutual agreements, loyalty, and respect for authority figures. Submissive and unsubmissive nature. Submissive is using the ability to be humble, resistible, or yielding. You acknowledge to submit to God and others, therefore, others submit to you. Due to having the mental stability to learn from mistakes, you are likely to yield to authority figures. Which makes you certain, mature, meek, and lily at heart. Whereas unsubmissive is using the ability to be less humble, non-resistant, or unyielding. You don't acknowledge to submit to God and others, therefore others don't submit to you. Due to having mental instability to learn from mistakes, you are unlikely to yield to authority figures. Which makes you immature, vulnerable, weak, and uncertain. After that, it wouldn't take much getting out of line with God to be classified as unstable. Mature and immature behavior. This pertains to an adult who is middle-aged or older that is full of character and has reached full potential. When you are mature, it means the body and mind are complete in natural development and growth, and as known being too mature can make you appear transformed and old school. This pertains to a newborn unto middle age who lacks full characteristics of reaching full potential. When you are immature, it means the body and mind are incomplete in natural development and growth, and as known being too immature can make you appear childish and in transformation. Fellowship The gift of God to have eternal life and have it more abundantly is a gift from the heart for all the world to receive. An everlasting gift that lives on through the spiritual soul and is to be passed down to the next generation. The condition or relation of being a fellow friend is a part of a fellowship in a congregation, in which members invite others to the church. As a Christian, it is up to us to show people living in the fleshly mind, the spirit of God's light. It will help anyone live through Jesus Christ's righteousness to get focus and stand firm, and this is how to fellowship. It is difficult for people who don't acknowledge him as the spirit of God, to acknowledge that anything is to be long term ought to be viewed from the spiritual perspective, and not of the flesh. The obvious issue isn't knowing the lust isn't of him, it is changing the mind from immoral thinking to moral thinking. In general, to live of the spirit and not of the flesh because lusts of the world aren't of him. Example, the scarlet is supposed to be red, but when you are full of corruption, sin, the scarlet is purple. The blood represents the scarlet robe, which turns to white when traveling throughout heaven as an angel of God. Jesus' gift of a righteous lifestyle can make the scarlet white, in turn, 
this will enable tools to cleanse the blood from purple to red. Claiming the victory. The church as a whole has been in a spiritual battle of warfare since Jesus started to exist in spirit. However, God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus. Thessalonians 5 9, joy is said to mean Jesus, others, and self. We can't claim the victory without wanting to see others achieve the same victory. Achieving a victory only when it will affect you directly or indirectly, doesn't show you are willing to complete the battle. You can't look for a battle when it is time to claim the victory, and you can't claim the victory when it is time to fight the battle. Too many people are experiencing fake joy. Paul also said, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient toward all men. See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves, and to all men. Rejoice evermore. 5 colon 14 16, Jesus can bring natural joy into anyone's heart, with him the purpose of the battle is for obedience and to have life more abundantly, not to win an argument or fight. He offers us continual salvation for winning his battle over death. We must come together through mutual agreements and loyalty building self-respect, but prayer and obedience work most effectively over the rebellious nature. Prayer for others, with others, and self, can strengthen the soul to know what others and self needs. In Thessalonians 5:17, Paul said, Pray without ceasing. So, never become disconnected from God utilize prayer. Consumed with the idea success. The idea of success is being honored for accomplishments of one's goals, which can come in instant gratification. When you think of the word success, it is perceived as short-term combings, but applying yourself only when there is an instant payoff won't help to build long-term happiness or wealth. You must plan long-term to reap long-term success. Someone who has come a long way knows the difference and is willing to do whatever it takes, no criticizer from out of hell will modify their determination, and that is how real willpower works. And sure, most people are consumed with their idea of success when not going to hell is a success. Heaven is not a right it is a privilege. False sense of security. What we have learned thus far, is what tends to be inaccurate or uncertain, is often done unfaithfully or without loyalty. And what tends to be deceptive and unpractical, is often cruel and disingenuous. The person thinks everything is fine when in fact, there are mistakes or missteps which can lead to a situation. In some situations, falseness is a temporary fix because dishonesty often occurs, until the facts are proven. In respect to not having the freedom of danger and risk, they are also unfree of anxiety and threats. In which, the perceptions become a mental discernment or realization of one's sanity. This can form doubt which can make the person feel less connected and secure in their environment. Using the ability to sense what's going on in your environment, can change the course of action. Compared to True sense of security What we have learned thus far, is what tends to be accurate or certain, is often done faithfully or with loyalty. And what tends to be truthful or trustworthy, is often genuine and practical. The person thinks everything isn't fine when in fact, there are no mistakes or missteps that would lead to a situation. In some situations, truthfulness is a long-term fix because honesty often occurs, even when facts are proven. With respect to being free of danger and risk, they are also free of anxiety and threats. In which, the perceptions become a mental discernment or realization of one's sanity. This can eliminate doubt which can make the person feel more connected and secure in their environment. Using the ability to sense what's going on in your environment, can help to know what's going on. Sense of entitlement. The functions of human anatomy enable the ability to sense what is entitled, and it involves fundamental as well as superficial existence. To be legally entitled to something, the person who holds the power of authority would have to give you the claim, right, or title, to permit such action. Entitled traits are valued by culture and society as a part of one's individuality, it shows one's uniqueness with the ability to know what one needs. As human beings, everyone is entitled to a better quality of life, and sure, we are naturally programmed to need more than what is entitled. You have entitlement on any class level, ethnic, and social status, there is no denying it. People who avoid enforcing entitled upon others often believe earning, with hard work and determination is how to acquire things. But, when aging and health get worse, you are confronted with limitations that threaten your need for entitlement, and the idea of social life doesn't meet the idea of success as intended. Confronting those limitations may clash with worldviews, in which, the outward personality trait may endure unmet expectations that can form into a self-reinforcing behavior. When an entitled person is programmed to think that they ought to receive everything without cost, it often costs their happiness along with other relationships. Only under extreme levels, entitlement is a toxic narcissistic trait that exposes people to feelings of disappointment, frustration, and unhappiness with life. The entitled benefits are shortcomings with long-term consequences and are associated with depression, interpersonal conflict, and poor relationship skills. Belief in entitlement is a rising phenomenon that is leading to more psychological and social costs. 
where people believe they are more entitled than the prior generation. Yet still, researchers have discovered entitlement, is driven by exaggerated feelings of deservingness and superiority. Jesus said your treasures are in heaven, so at least wait until you move to a heavenly place before extending the needs. Could a false sense of security start with kids in the home? Actually yes. The false sense often reveals worse things, such as abuse or neglect. Utilizing entitled effectively. The belief in entitlement itself can be considered as a false sense of entitlement, however, it isn't against the law to sense entitlement. Everyone has a sensing ability, but not everyone utilizes entitled effectively. If everyone utilized entitlement from a righteous sense, no one would feel entitled. When you use entitlement from a righteous sense, you start noticing your desires, needs and wants getting met in an orderly fashion. It is the impatience of entitlement that makes your needs not get met. Now having said, when babies are born you must teach them the proper reasons to cry. They can cry for bathing, dirty diaper, a reminder of one of the eating times, and adequate attention and love. Those are the practical reasons for babies crying, but excessive crying is taught once you show them you can't keep promises. Then in actuality, they are already aware the trust is broken. From what I have noticed, some parents don't repeat the necessary steps to gain trust with the baby, because they don't want to be held accountable for the baby feeling a sense of entitlement towards things he slash she needs. This is a dangerous mistake parents often make, and it is the wrong thing to do during a child's development. But generally, those parents are often treated the same way, and the mentality got passed down, but all this would need to stop before considering yourself a good parent. Discipline your child but don't take away their entitlement to child development. Remember depriving them of development isn't needed, over the knowledge of God's word. 5. Entitlements, where needs often go unmet. 1. Men, women, or kids often feel a need for quality time, with each other or spouse. 2. A person may feel the need to be number one. 3. Everyone can use better civil and human rights. 4. Material gains. 5. Subrace entitlements. 16. Complex and extreme levels of entitlement. 1. Openly advertising self-pity as melodramatic, in attention-seeking ways. 2. Deep-seated conviction is a top priority, even when stepping all over others. 3 often craving admiration and adoration. 4. Desiring happiness, and going out the way at the expense of others to ensure that takes place. 5. Urgently believing to succeed is going to any length. 6. Imposing impractical demands upon others. 7. Perceiving others as only being a competition or threat. 8. Exhibiting a double standard view of your behavior and interaction with others. 9. Wanting more from friends and relationships than you are willing to give back. 10 observing your desires and needs 100% of the time. 11. Avoid making compromises or negotiations, it is a one-size-fits-all perspective. 12. Thinking of being better or more important than others, and believing no one should question you but only respect your wishes. 13. Often asserting domination or superiority as second nature over others. 14. People often become offended or upset by what you do or say, due to your lack of concern for others. 15. People have noticed your bullying, egotistical, lying, manipulative, ruthless, vain ways and have called you out about it. 16. Actively punishing others when you don't get what you want aggressively or didn't get what you needed passively, with abuse, gossiping, shouting, or even the silent treatment. Showing malice intent. A desire to cause distress, injury, or pain to another that is motivated by a hostile impulse or deep-seated resentment for evil shows malice. It is against the law to cause malice from those categories because the person who commits the wrong injurious another or others. While these actions show signs of a false sense of security, these actions are often used to acquire entitlements. When a pastor dates a woman of the congregation on the down low and then kills his wife to be with the other woman, it is a wrong thing to do. When a person dates outside the marriage and kills the spouse for an insurance policy, it is wrong to do. When an adult groom a child for sex violating their human rights and responsibilities, it is the wrong thing to do. When a highly authoritarian parent inflicts mental or physical abuse upon a child expecting to get a mental check off of them, it is wrong to do. When a person uses alcohol and drugs to only be evaluated as having a mental disorder, it is the wrong thing to do. When a woman has kids at home, and she goes out to the streets to sell her body for alcohol and drugs, it is wrong to do. When a person sexually assaults another person and then denies the actions, it is wrong to do. When a person goes out and commits armed robbery, burglary, or even murder to take what doesn't belong to them, it is wrong to do. When a person seeks employment with a company and swindles victims of thousands of dollars, it is the wrong thing to do. When attorneys or judges take kickbacks underneath the table to sway a decision, it is the wrong thing to do. When a person goes out and commits terrorist attacks against innocent people, and then plead insanity, if they haven't already been proven insane it can reveal unjust actions. All these mayhem and mishaps, and more often prevent parents from raising their kids responsibly.
rational and irrational thinking. Rational thinking is based on the brain analyzing logic and reason to compute factual information. This allows you to look beyond the current emotions and consider the facts available, and act wisely, therefore you don't become a slave to the emotions. Because rational thinking makes you focus on facts. Whereas irrational thinking is based on the heart's anxiousness that leads to being overwhelmed. The person is focused on recent and similar situations, so they use that knowledge for handling the current situation. The tension completely disregards logic and reason for making quick decisions. When irrational thinking distorts reality and work and puts a barrier between the person and success. Reality and work without logic and reason can become detrimental. Change can be good for anyone who was raised around irrational thinkers, to know what life supposes to be like.